at this point, we have derived a full-blown six-degree freedom nonlinear equation of motion. Now, we are going to linearize the equation using small disturbance theory. Um, in small disturbance theory, we assume that the airplane motion um, consists of a steady flight condition plus uh, a perturbed condition, which is a small deviation from the steady state condition. Here, I list down four steps into the process of linearizing an equation. So step one, uh, we write the equation of motion uh, in terms of the steady state plus the perturbed variable. Step two, we apply the small angle assumption, which means that the cosine of the small angle um, is equal to approximately one, and the sine of the small angle is approximately zero radians. Step three, we assume the products of small perturbations are negligible, so they are zero. And step four, we separate the steady state equation from the perturbed equation. This would then give the linearized aircraft equation of motion in the perturbed mode. For step one, we rewrite the equation in terms of the steady state variable plus the perturbed variable. This is based on the assumption that the motion of the aircraft is considered as an initial steady state or trimmed value plus a perturbed value. So each motion variable in the aircraft equation is written as the steady state value plus the perturbed value. Um, in this slide, subscript 1 is used to denote the steady state value while the lower case um, of the variable denotes the perturbed value. Note that in the Robert Nelson textbook, subscript 0 is used to denote steady state value while delta is used to denote perturbed value. So each of the motion variable in the equation of motion will be rewritten as the steady state value plus the perturbed value. We do the same um, for the forces and the moments. Here's an example of the step one in the linearization process of the 3D growth freedom uh, longitudinal equation of motion. The equations do get longer, but bear with me, this will be very much simplified in the next steps. In step two and three, we apply small angle assumption and uh, we assume that the products uh, of small perturbations are zero. And with this assumption, we manage to strike out a lot of the variables in the equation. And finally, in step four, we just separate and remove the steady state variable, um, which are the variables with subscript one. So we are left with uh, the terms with the perturbed variables only. Here's an example of the same linearization step but for the 3D graph freedom lateral directional equations. We can further simplify our equation by specifying some initial conditions that would make the problem simpler. Essentially, we assume that uh, the aircraft is initially flying at a trim condition where it's flying straight, wings level flight, and with no side slip. This implies that there will be no side velocity, no roll rate, no pitch rate, no yaw rate. Um, with this assumption, um, then we can um, denote that the initial steady state bank angle the sight velocity, the sight slip, uh, roll rate, pitch rate, and yaw rate are all equal to zero. We can er uh, further assume that uh, if we're working um, in the body fixed stability axis, we can further assume that uh, the vertical velocity is zero. So these simplification would eventually lead to much simpler linearized equation of motion. These are the linearized 
3D Girl Freedom aircraft equation of motion in longitudinal motion. And these are the linearized 3D Girl Freedom aircraft equation of motion in lateral directional motion. Let's now complete the aircraft equation by properly defining the aerodynamic forces and moments involved in the equation. Note that each of the aerodynamic force um, or moment can be expressed as functions of the motion variables pertaining to that motion. To represent, um, the motion, the, to represent the force function with these variables, we just take a Taylor series expansion of the variables about the equilibrium position. For example, the force in x direction uh, can be described as a function of the forward speed, u, the vertical speed, w, the elevator deflection, and the thrust. So we take the partial derivative of these x force with respect to each of these motion variables. If we divide the partial derivative with the mass m, we get a term that we call the stability derivative. So essentially the forces and moments um, in the aircraft equation of motion will be described using stability derivatives. Here's the linearized longitudinal equation of motion. With the aerodynamic forces and moments expanded and represented in terms of stability derivatives, this equation can be analyzed more easily if they are rewritten in state space representation like this. Here you can see that the longitudinal motion, um, uh, the motion variables are uh, u, w, q, and theta. And the control variables are delta E and delta T. Well, note that when we expand the force and moments term, we assume that the force is a function of several motion variables only. And in this specific example, it is shown that the force X uh, is a function of U, W, delta E, and delta T. Note that um, we can also assume that the X force uh, is a function of the forward speed, the angle of attack, uh, the rate of the angle of attack, the pitch rate, and the elevator deflection. If we assume that the forces are derived by these variables, then our equation of motion would be different than this one. But it will still be describing the aircraft's motion quite reasonably well. Here's an example of the linearized lateral directional motion of the aircraft uh, with the aerodynamic forces and moments expanded and represented in terms of stability derivatives. So now that we have derived and linearized our aircraft's equation of motion, our next lesson will be on carrying out dynamic stability analysis based on these equations of motion.